So I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Sing that with us. So I raise a hallelujah. We'd like to welcome you tonight to Trinity Christian School and the youth rally that uh, we're so blessed and honored to put on every year. Thank you, uh, pastors and youth pastors, for committing to this and bringing your, the people that you're investing in. One of the main reasons we do this in our community is we want to partner with our youth pastors and pastors who are in the trenches every day working to disciple young people. So if you're New to Trinity, if you've not been here, if you don't go to school here, we welcome you to our campus. We want a, a big thank you and a big welcome from our headmaster and our board. Tonight, there's a couple things I want to do, and then I'm going to ask someone uh, to come up and share just a brief minute with you before we enter into worship. I'm really excited about what God's doing. There's a few things, though, that we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask if you have to get up. We ask that you not get up. Uh, when our speaker comes and he begins to share God's word. But if you have to get up for an emergency, we ask that you go out this back door and you're very quiet. We ask that you um, stay in attendance, that we're not a distraction if we, to get up early or during an invitation. Uh, we don't want to distract anybody or maybe God's doing in their life. Uh, our restrooms are right out this door here to the right if you need to, to know that. And then we just ask for your attention as we honor our Lord in, in worship and of preaching of the Word of God. Mr. Eric Helms is our speaker tonight. I'm so glad he was in our chapel this morning. I'm gl so glad to have him with us. Thank you for being here tonight. He's going to share the Word of God with us tonight. Amazing testimony that you're going to hear. And maybe uh, tonight we know, uh, we talked to, um, to our pastors, to our band, to our, to our speaker tonight already. We know that everyone in this room is here and they have a purpose and a plan for their lives. And we're so thankful that you're, you're here. We know that it's not an accident. So uh, you mean the world to us, and we know that God has you here for a reason. The next thing I want to do is I want to introduce to you um, a lady. Uh, we don't know each other well, but God put ABC Women's Clinic on my heart and on a heart of our team that put this together a few weeks ago. And... Um, we were sitting in a meeting and God had put on my heart, um, right now the unborn is under attack in our, in our culture. And uh, that hurts my heart deeply. And uh, the Lord laid on my heart, ABC Women's Clinic, Miss, Miss Becky Wood, I'm going to ask you, you two to come. I asked her to come. I, well, we called her and we said, can we take up a special offering? Can we do something to help your cause? And if you don't know about the cause that these women champion. It's an amazing cause. Um, and so I asked her to come tonight and share just a few minutes with you about what God's doing in, in the heart of your ministry and uh, what we can be praying about. I know tomorrow she's going to share with you is an extremely important date in the state of Georgia of what's going to happen and be voted on. So I'm going to have her come. When she's done, I'll I'll. Lead us in prayer, and we'll be, we'll be led in worship. Thank you, Chuck. Well, it's a privilege always to share what God is doing through ABC Women's Clinic. So, several of you stopped at the front, but, you know, um, none of us would be here if uh, we weren't given the right to life. And in our country, um, many of you understand that that's a very, uh, it's not something we can take for granted anymore because the culture says it's okay. Uh, recently, New York State passed the law that children can be aborted even up to and right after birth. And we know that's not God's heart because he created each one of us. And we do have a destiny. Even those who are aborted had a destiny. But God gives us the choice. And he says if you choose good, you get blessed. If you choose evil, you get cursed. And ABC Women's Clinic has been helping women in unplanned pregnancies for uh, 27 years make choices that they can live with instead of choices they can't change. So um, 
I want to just share a little of the statistics and also share what's happening tomorrow, but I want Joy Simmons, who is uh, one of the patient liaisons at ABC Women's Clinic, and she's um, right there in the trenches. I don't see patients anymore because I have much, not more important, but I have different uh, responsibilities now. So um, it, since we began a ministry, and it was started by a church locally, and then it involved all the churches, most of the churches that are here partner with us, and many individuals here partner with us to make it possible, because we're not a government agency. We're a nonprofit 501c3 organization. ABC Women's Clinic has saved the lives of over 2,270 babies since that time. And we can't take credit for that because it's all God. But he puts in the hearts of his people to do what he needs done. Now, I want you to understand, if there's anybody here who's been privy to an abortion or taken somebody or any of that, there is no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus. I am only here by the grace of God because I have believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he has changed me from my old man to the new man and I am redeemed by his blood. And that's the only reason any of us can come before a holy God. So in addition to that, 855 souls have been saved in that 27 years. That's a lot and that's big. Georgia is at a crucial point right now. Before the House of Representatives last week, a, a bill, House Bill 481, it's called the Life Act, was passed last Thursday night late. It's going before the Senate committee tomorrow at 3 o'clock. If the Senate committee passes it, it goes to the full Senate to vote on. We need that bill to pass. It will essentially end abortion after six weeks in Georgia. And right now on our table out front, we've got babies, 20 weeks. That second baby there is the age you can still abort children right now. So um, we, we thank God for all he's doing in Georgia. We ask for you to pray. We thank you for, the, for allowing us the privilege of sharing what God's doing through ABC. And here's Joy Simmons, and she's going to share more. Hi, everyone. I'm Joy Simmons. Um, I've been working with ABC Women's Clinic for about six months, um, and I get to work directly with patients most of the time. So um, I get to talk to them and hear a little bit about their story. But the biggest part of my job is I get to share the gospel with them. So I talk to them about Christ and see if they have a relationship with him. And if they don't, I help lead them to Christ. And um, it's just a really cool experience. Um, the biggest thing that I've learned so far would just be that love goes further than what you would think. Um, a lot of girls come in feeling like they're not cared about and like they're not loved. And just us being kind and letting them know that, okay, we care about you. We understand that you're in a tough situation. Um, and it makes a big difference. Lots of the girls say they felt safe, respected, heard, and it just means a lot for me to deal with them. So. Thank you all for making it possible. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love and grace. God, we thank you so much for people that are willing to be in, in the mess in people's lives in their most trying times to love on them and to care for them and to offer them hope. And God, we know that you are the only hope. And right now, Lord, as we are about to enter into worship to an almighty God, I pray that this not be about us, that this be about your holy name. God, right now, I pray for the people tomorrow at three o'clock who will vote. God, I pray for the unborn. I pray for those souls. Thank you, Lord, for loving us in all of our struggles. Thank you for caring for us. Be honored and glorified tonight. In your holy name that we pray, amen.
Bailey Custom Flooring is a proud sponsor of the St. Patrick's Youth Rally. Bailey Custom Flooring, proven contractors of commercial and residential coverings. For professional sales and installation, call 290-6084. Bailey Custom Flooring has vinyl and carpet in stock. And happy St. Patrick's from your friends at Bailey Custom Flooring. Lawrence County's leader in hometown banking is Farmers State Bank. From our customer service professionals, to our mortgage specialist or any of our professional lenders. We're committed to making banking as easy as FSB. Farmer State Bank, with locations in Dublin and Cadwell, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Stop by today and find out why we make banking as easy as FSB. Hey, thank you so much to uh, Mr. Cooey. Uh, thank you so much for Chuck and all the volunteers uh, that were able to pull this thing off. Uh, I want to say a couple things before we get started. Um, is on the way out, there are Bibles at both doors. Now you might be thinking, dude, I got like 15 Bibles at the house, I don't need a Bible. Yeah, but you hopefully are trying to invest in somebody. If you're a believer, you're trying to invest in somebody so you can grab a Bible to free. Uh, also, what you're about to hear is put in the form of a track or a little kind of pamphlet looking thing. Um, and you're more than welcome to take some of those on the way out too. And then on the back is the best part of it. You get to actually sit here and lead your friend to Christ. And you can literally read on the back of it and you can like lead your friend to Christ. I had the privilege of leading my 83-year-old grandfather to faith in Christ. And I remember it. Like it was just a few minutes ago. I had the opportunity to read a track. And I was so nervous and, and I was just bawling. And, and so I was talking to my grandmother, grandfather. And as I was sharing with them, I, I, I was talking to my grandmother. And, and I, I shared Christ. And then I saw my grandfather literally raise his hand up in the air. He says, hey, what about me? So, so I, I came over to him, and I knelt down, and, and we, we call him Pup Up. Um, so we called him Pup Up, and Pup Up put his hands, his feeble hands in my hands, and, and he uh, came to faith in Christ. It was so cool. And then, actually, a couple years later, he passed away, and I had the crazy privilege of, of doing his funeral. So it was just an amazing, amazing time. So... Uh, but anyway, on the way down here, I was praying, of course, and, and I'm like, this is awesome, man. It's flat down here. I just, I'm just i from North Georgia. Man, we got lots of mountains up there. But down here, the hunting's good, man. Hunting's good down here. So I, I was on the way down here. It's beautiful here in Dublin. So uh, just, uh, I just love it. So um, anyway, I wanted to start out. I've never been down here. I was down here a long time ago when the Home Depot opened up, uh, but I haven't been down here since. So Whenever I come to, uh, to a place, I always like to share my story of how Jesus saved my hell-bound, rotten soul. What you're about to hear could change your life. And I make great eye contact, so I want to make sure you're listening. And if somebody falls asleep, I'll pick out the person next to you and make sure they wake you up because you might hear something. And Satan is at work. Uh, unfortunately, I've been actually sick the last couple days, and some crazy stuff's been going on, and uh, so I know Satan's working overtime uh, for you not to hear this message that could change your life. It could not only change your life, but it could change the life of your generations to come, your kids, kids, kids. So I want you to listen close over these next several minutes um, and listen uh, intently. So anyway, I was raised in a uh, great moral home. My dad was, uh, we, didn't, we didn't do church. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I thought people who did church were old, weird, um, and they were just different. I don't really understand why they were so happy all the time. I didn't really get that. And um, so we didn't do church. Uh, we did church Christmas and Easter, and that was about it. And growing up in a home, my dad uh, was in the military. So uh, he is a Marine still alive to this day, so he, uh, he is a Marine. So, but not only was my dad a Marine, he was a man's man, but he was 
uh, big and buff. So he was buffer than any of the other dads. So I was like, man, I want to be like my dad. So some of you want to be like your dads and some of you don't. Um, some of you young ladies want to be like your mom and some of you don't. But I wanted to be just like my dad. So growing up in that household, he, uh, he did the Olympic lifting that you see on TV. He did that. And then also he did the bodybuilding. Now bodybuilding is kind of it's kind of a weird sport because uh, you get up on a stage like this and you get dressed up in a little bitty bikini looking thing. You shave up and you grease up and, and all that and you flex your muscles. And, and he did that and he did so well at it. He's in, actually in bodybuilding magazines. So growing up as a young man, you can imagine, I'm like, I want to be just like my dad. So growing up um, in middle school and late in middle school in eighth grade, I started making some poor choices. I started hanging around with people I shouldn't have been hanging around with. See, tonight you're sitting next to a person that's helping you in your life. Or you're sitting next to a person that is helping you make poor decisions in life. So tonight, you may have to make some hard choices. You may have to make some hard choices. So growing up in that household... Unfortunately, um, in eighth grade, I started uh, smoking pot and making poor decisions and drinking alcohol in eighth grade. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Some of y'all, I'm already losing some of y'all. Don't drink. Might be thinking, dude, you're kind of late, man. You're too late. Look, don't, don't even drink. Hey, Andy Stanley, some of you know him. He said, he said, I've never known anybody to start drinking alcohol to better their life. So in eighth grade, started making poor decisions, and ninth grade, tenth grade, well, I started training. My dad was my trainer, so started lifting weights, started powerlifting, and doing a bench press. Some of you guys know a bench press, squat, and the deadlift. A deadlift is where you just grab the bar and you stand straight up, and the squat, you put it on your back and squat down really, really low. So, uh, so I did that, and at 15 years old, I weighed about 183 pounds. I was about 5'10" and ended up squatting 315 pounds and deadlifting 420 pounds and bench pressing 220 pounds as a 15-year-old young man. So I had it going on, and I won the Georgia State Powerlifting Championship. I'm like, man, I got it going on. Everybody's my friend now. I'm like, this is what I need to do to get friends. So I'm like, okay. So I continued to do that, but I started to get into bodybuilding, and, and I got in my first bodybuilding contest when I was 17 and a senior in high school. But through those high school years, played ball, wrestled, and uh, swam early on, uh, but did all that, and, but I continued to make poor decisions. So I got arrested for underage drinking and then got arrested for simple battery. So, so I, I was, was mad. I was always angry, and I would beat people up. I didn't care what they looked like. And what you're hearing today, and let me just hit a timeout button, what you're hearing today is a testimony. See, a lot of you have a testimony, and you are supposed to share your testimony with others because they want to know, why are you so different? And you can tell them your testimony of what happened pre-Christian, what happened on that day, and what happened afterwards. So I'll continue on. So 17, 18 years old, got in the Mr. Georgia bodybuilding contest and got beat really bad. So at 18 and a half years old, ended up making a poor decision and started taking steroids. So steroids, not only taking them orally, but injecting them into my body because I wanted to be number one. I wanted to beat anybody, and I didn't care who you were. I wanted to be number one. I wanted to be the biggest, the best, the strongest, and I wanted the fame, and I wanted the fortune, and I wanted the popularity, and I wanted the prestige, and I wanted the fast cars, and I wanted the fast women, and I was a mess. But on the outside, I look like I had it going on. See, some of you here, on the outside, man, you look like you got it going on. But on the inside, man, you might be a wreck. And what I know is, is that all of us have issues. So whether you come to Trinity Christian or whether you go to another school or whatever, wherever you go to church, we're all jacked up. Because Adam and Eve, they jacked us up a long time ago. All right, and that sin nature just continues on and it continues on. Some of you need to make a decision tonight and you need to stop running. Some of you, you're running. But on the outside, you're like, man, I got it going on. Yeah, but on the inside, you're a mess. Or you're fooling a lot of people. 
Guess what? Can't fool God. So anyway, so at 18 years old, 19 years old, I won the Teenage Mr. Atlanta Bodybuilding Championship. I'm on top of the world. And now at this time, I'm not only taking drugs, but I'm selling drugs, selling steroids, selling cocaine, sell, selling ecstasy, which you may have heard it's called Molly Now. It's just, just a mess, y'all. But again, on the outside, got it going on, 20 years old. So I'm getting in these bodybuilding contests, doing awesome. So this, uh, this fitness center, I was working in a fitness center, and this uh, young lady, she started talking to me. And, and I'm just in passing, you know, hi or whatever, and, and I'm just like, why is she even giving me the time of day? Because she's like way out of my league. So I'm like, you know, and I'll hit another timeout button. She was fine. You know what I'm saying? Okay. She was hot. All right. Let me help you out. She was good looking. So I'm like, okay. So we started talking, and we're continuing to talk. And she said, uh, would you come to church with me? And I was like, and before I could, like, she could get the words out, I was like, yes. And, and uh, so let me, let me just say something to the young ladies. Hey, guys, they'll fool you. You need to be so in love with Jesus that if a young man is interested in you, he needs to chase Jesus to find you. And young men, if there's a lady that's interested in you, you, hey, she needs to chase Jesus to find you. So I go to church with her. So she has no idea like when the sun goes down, what I turn into. So, so I go to church with her. I've been out all night, so I come, I come to church, and what I do is, is I sit down on the second row from the back, kind of right where you're at, all right? So I come in church. It's, it's more narrow than this, but it's a lot longer. So I come in, and I sit down right here. Now, she continues to walk down, and then she's like, where, where, where's Eric? So she comes back. She grabs my arm, dude, and she pulls me down all the way up front. Like, all the way up front, like, like this close to the stage, and I'm not the first row, but the second. So I'm just like, so I actually had to kind of look up like this to, to see, like, the guy coming out. And, and I thought he was just a guy, um, uh, but he is a special man in my life. So he starts preaching. I was like, man, this guy's having fun. So he says, Romans 3.23, I see some of you brought your Bibles, amen? Amen? Okay, that's right. You see, some of y'all use your Bible and your phone, and when a text comes across, guess what? You're like, you're out. You're going to look at the text. So that's why it's so important to read the Word of God not off your phone. You can do it off your phone, but you'll get interrupted. So anyway, Romans 3.23, he says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Some of you know this verse for a long, long time. Some of you don't. So all have sinned. Two and three-year-old kids, they call it the terrible what? Twos, right. Okay, so did anybody teach them how to be mean? No, they're just born that way, right? So then we grow up, and guess what? We grow up, and then we're... Big, mean people, all right? So, so then the Bible says in Romans 8, 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus demonstrates that. Not demonstrated, but demonstrates. So he demonstrates his love for us. Hey, listen, you may not feel loved right now, but listen, every single one of you, I heard Chuck say it earlier, every single one of you, you're important to God because you're not, you're not gone yet. Everybody here is important to God, and you can make a difference whether you think you can or not. So then uh, I'm sitting here you know, at this church, and then he says, Romans 6, 23, for the wages or the consequences of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a free gift. So let me help you. I talked about it earlier today, but um, tell me your name. Right here, yeah, you, yeah. Carson? Okay, Carson. All right, Carson. So if I said, Carson, Merry Christmas, and went like this and I gave you a gift, then what, what would you do with it then, Carson? Open it, but what would you do before that when I went like this? Take it, all right, you take it. 
Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift. So Carson, maybe or maybe not, you've taken the greatest gift of all, and that's Jesus. We all have that opportunity to take the greatest gift of all, and that's turning from our sinful nature. Acts 3, 19 says that, hey, your sins may be blotted out. If you'll just ask him, if you'll just take it. That's all you got to do is take it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like... Dublin Macon Cardiology, celebrating over 14 years of serving Dublin and Lawrence County. At Dublin Macon Cardiology, we're always committed to taking care of you and your heart. Bringing state-of-the-art cardiac care closer to home with a walk-in chest pain center. New patients are always welcome and no referral is ever required. Dr. Vega is proud to announce the addition of Elise Rotrammel, a nurse practitioner, to our staff. Drop by today at Dublin Macon Cardiology, 206A Hospital Drive in Dublin. Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment... No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Or Insurance in Dublin is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. So I'm continuing to sit there and he's going through this scripture and then he says Romans 10, 9, and 10, for that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, you will be saved or you will become a Christian. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about the Bible. As a matter of fact, um, for a little bit, I didn't even, you know, I was flipping through the Bible one time and it was spelled J-O-B and I thought it was about a bunch of jobs, okay? I just didn't know. You know, some, some of you people here, you may not know, and I didn't. I didn't even have a Bible until I was 21. So, so anyway, so, he, so then he says, if you confess with your mouth, I just want to make sure you're listening. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that's all you got to do. You just take it, y'all. You don't have to go to classes to earn it. You don't have to pay for it. You, you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is ask. But he wants you to ask. Or you can continue to roll the dice and leave here, and you may not make it home. So I'm sitting there, and I'm starting to sweat, all right, because of the conviction. Y'all know what conviction is? All right? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so conviction. So I'm starting to sweat. I'm like, man, this guy looks excited. His eyes are about this big. He's got veins coming out of his neck. And he, then he says, Romans 10, 13, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what happens is, is I continue to go back to church with this young lady. And, and by the way, she's more godly than she was fine. You understand? Understand that? I didn't know what godly meant. All right, so, so anyway, so I continue to go. And then I was invited to a prayer breakfast where they had free food. Amen. That's right, free food. So, so I go, I like my Chick-fil-A app, amen? That's right. So, so man, I got all kinds of points on that thing. So, amen. So anyway, I go to this prayer breakfast, and I come uh, walking in, and this guy's sharing his story like I'm sharing my story with you. And, and then he shares the gospel. Y'all knew I was a sinner. I need to make a decision for Christ. I said, what about my friends? What about all my friends? Man, they're just going to like, they're going to leave. I don't want to have any friends. They're going to think I'm weird. They're going to think I'm different. So, so I'm like, well, what about my bodybuilding career? I can't take steroids anymore. I can't, can't do this and can't do that. Listen, the Bible is not just about, hey, it's, it's all about sweet solutions. That's what it is. Some people think it's, it's just a bunch of rules and regulations, but it's sweet solutions, y'all. So that war was going on, kind of like the war that's going on with you right now. You're like, man, 
I need to make a decision for Jesus. Yes, you do. So, so I made the decision that day. I turned from my sin, placed my faith in Christ. Man, I cried for like two days. I'm like, what's wrong with me? I don't understand this. I'm crying. My dad taught me, never cry, son. Never. And now I'm crying. What am I crying? Because God forgave me of my sin. He forgave me of, of all the sin that, that I did, that I all the people that I hurt, all the drugs that I sold to and messed lives up. Hey, y'all, I still have a friend. 30 years, he just got out of a halfway house. He was my workout partner. He left the halfway house because he's not right yet. Y'all, I'm still trying to help friends from that long ago. So I made the greatest decision of my life. And about seven months later, That lady who invited me to church has now been my wife for almost 30 years. Now, I didn't think we'd be able to have kids because of the way I hurt my body. I hurt my body bad. We've been able to have five kids. I find it very interesting. God has a sense of humor. The same county that I got in trouble in, my son is a policeman in. <laughs> Y'all, some of you are saved, and you know exactly how joyous it is to know that you don't have to perform for anybody. Man, you don't have to do things to earn people's... You know what I'm talking about. But some of you aren't. So as Jordan and Ben comes up, I want to ask you a question. Have you made the greatest decision of your life? You see, some of you don't have a daddy. Statistics say 50% of you don't have a daddy. And if you have a daddy, he might be at home, but he's not at home. He's not involved in your life. But see, Jesus can be a father to the fatherless. He can be your Lord, your Savior, your Father, your friend, your Daddy, your King. He'll give you heaven to an abundant life. So why wouldn't you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Why wouldn't you? Let's pray. you're here tonight and you said you know what Mr. Eric I've never made that decision and I'm scared I understand just got to trust Mr. Eric you don't know how I've sinned yes I do you might be thinking Mr. Eric you were jacked up you needed Jesus I didn't do all that kind of stuff yeah, but we're all even at the foot of the cross. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So if you want to make the greatest decision of your life, more important than getting married, more important than going to college or a trade school, is becoming a Christian. If you want to make the greatest decision of your life, all you have to do is ask Him. And it goes something like this. It's not the words that save you, but it's the attitude of your heart. It goes something like this. You can repeat this in your heart. He'll hear you. Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Thank you so much for saving me right now. Thank you so much for being a Lord, a Savior, a Father, a friend, a Daddy, and a King to me. Thank you so much for giving me heaven too. And Lord, thank you. When times are difficult, you'll be with me. Thank you. 
Now help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. If you just made the greatest decision of your life, I wouldn't call you out or pick you out. I wouldn't embarrass you like that. But if you just made the greatest decision of your life and you've never made that decision before, I'd like you to slip your hand up in the air if you just made that decision. Christians in the attitude of prayer. Hands down. Lord, I just uh, pray for these two young men. Pray for the other people that were afraid to raise their hand. You say in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my God in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Lord in heaven. So I thank you for these young people that have raised their hand. For those that haven't. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like... Hi, I'm Kathy Thompson with K. Grayson Company Real Estate. Thanks a million for allowing us to be a part of the St. Patrick's Festival. We're so excited about the parade. You know, we don't want you to miss it because we're going to have a special guest. Shh, don't tell anybody, but you don't want to miss it. K. Grayson Company is excited about the new season, spring and summer. It's always best time to sell. Flowers are blooming. Kids about to get out of school. You give us a call at K. Grayson Company because we would love to give you a tour. K. Grayson Company knows we're lucky to live here. Let us take the time and worry off your hands and put your trust in a company that cares about your business. Gayco Healthcare, a long-term pharmacy right here in Dublin. Gayco Healthcare, a proud sponsor. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been such an amazing night. I'm here with Eric Helms here, a missionary to the students. To God be the glory. To God be That's the glory. Right. Eric, it's a pleasure to meet you. And you, Pat. It's uh, Thank you for the privilege of... Uh, of just sharing, hanging out with you, so and, and and everybody here, so for sure. You know, when we're just listening to your testimony about how you started out, how your life right. began, right, and how the turn that it took, mm -hmm. and how God transformed right. you, right. wow. Yeah, I, I'm still uh, a long time later. I'm yeah. still in awe of yeah. what He has done in my life, and I'm humbled, and privileged, and moved, and I yeah. still uh, have a hard time. Understanding yeah. to God be the glory for sure. You yeah. know, and you're talking about as an athlete and the type of athlete that you are. Do you uh, do you get to minister to athletes much and to be able to kind of you know get get through to that machoism a sometimes? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's it's just one of those things you just use weightlifting and football and athletics for <laughs> for a platform and for sure. and talk to uh, talk to youth about Christ and, yeah. and uh, they know what you've been through mm -hmm. and it, it's a just a sense of respect you know right out of the right. chute so, That's so beautiful. yeah to God be the glory and you know and, and your testimony there has to be such a sense of transparency mm. and that requires a lot of courage yeah. you know when you first started was that easy for you or did yes, it kind of no. take time no I'm an introvert right in an extroverted position so so <laughs> so God He's stretching you, yeah, right? Yeah, he's stretching me. So, so I still get nervous, and you know, and and uh, but I have to just give it all to him, and he right. takes that nervousness away, and he's mm -hmm. he's uh, set this up. He so, has, you know, yeah. and with you as a missionary to students, just think about that those that millennial generation there, to mm -hmm. where how they were raised is far different right. from you and I, of course, yeah. and and their journeys. Some of them have are, can't even fathom mm. what you've experienced. Right. How do you yeah. reach those that sometimes seem unreachable? Yeah. No, I just share the story. Share yeah. the story of what God has done in my life yeah. and how, how he 
um, took me from just a, a thug, basically, mm -hmm. and and then made me a new creation in Christ, wow. is what the Bible says. So, wow. so I just share that story, and then I give them an opportunity to accept the same gift that God's mm -hmm. given me. And, and that's, uh, that's him as my Lord and Savior. I so. love that. Yeah. And, of course, you know, it's interesting when, when people first see you, they think, Dag, who is this guy? I heard someone say that before, you know, just in first seeing you. And then when you open your mouth mm -hmm. and you share about, you know, being with your dad mm -hmm. and that relationship that you built and how you kind of went your own path, mm -hmm. your own way, yeah, right. and how God brought you back in. Mm -hmm. You know, listening to you gives people hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. I mean, hey, if, if, if Jesus can change my life, he can change yours as well. So, you know, and that's what I try to tell everybody is that, yeah. hey, Jesus is in the life-changing business. He is, and he's definitely, you know, personally, he's changed mine. I, amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. And, you know, to live to tell about things that we've experienced, mm, that in itself right. is amazing. Right, yeah. And when we look at, you know, the type personalities that we have, you know, and the influence that we have of the people around us. Mm -hmm. And when he saves us, mm. wow. Yes. Too much is given, much is required. Hey, man, you that's say a good that, word. Eric, that's, you know? that's a good word, Pat. That's right. Yes. I might be a missionary to that's students. That's right. If I, I keep hanging around you. Hey, hey, that's right. Going to schools, you can share, Pat. For Come sure, on, do for it. Sure, that's for right. sure. right. He called us all. So. Yes, he has. Yes. And so for your ministry, tell us the name of your ministry. Driven to Encourage Ministries. Wow. Right because he has driven me to do this mm -hmm. and he was also driven on the cross. Look at that. So, so that propels me to go and share in the middle schools and high schools and even some colleges. Look at that, so, that's beautiful. Yeah, so in a college be arena, that is perfect for you. Mm, You've yeah. got a lot of what you call muscle heads out yeah, there. Yeah, that's know, a right. Lot of jocks, you that's know? right. And, and during this time, you know, having college students and I think about the things that they are privy to and the different mm -hmm. um, negative things that they can actually, you know, take part in. Mm -hmm. It's good to have guys like you. That's right. Just yeah. so, so they're not chasing the fame, the fortune, the popularity, right. the prestige, mm -hmm. and that clouds a lot of people's minds it does. And, and their hearts, really, frankly. So, uh, yeah. so then when I share with them that been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got holes right. in it and Hey, right. don't go down that path. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. you know, it's a lot of pain. So, it is. It um, is. so, but, but Jesus is a uh, Lord, savior, father, friend, daddy, and king. Yes, he and is. So, amen. So. And it's been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing your pain that oh. has turned into your passion. Amen. It's Amen. been a pleasure. That's a great word. Thank you, <laughs> you Miss Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eric Helms. It's been wonderful here for the seventh annual St. Patrick's uh, Youth Youth Riley here at Trinity Christian School. Thank you to all of the youth, all of the, the right. churches, the schools that have taken part of it. Thank you to Trinity for housing it and having so many uh, great people here. Uh, Jordan Eccles and the great band, uh, thank you for that ministry as well. It takes so many people to come that's together right. for one reason. That's right. Everybody's a part. All right. Very so, good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great night. Eric, we're out. See you later. God bless. God bless. See you. So I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Wow.